Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Everybody in house, our church family, our church family online, we want to thank you guys for being here. We started J Kids back today, very safe, uh, very secure, as, as safe as we could possibly make it. And so we're just believing that God's going to do great things back there as your kids get the gospel in person for the first time in probably uh, months, at least from. The church's perspective, we know that you teach them at home, but uh, man, we're just so excited. Tonight is Karen Peck and New River. They're coming here, first concert they've done in a while. Again, everything's going to be cleaned and, and sanitized and everything before you get here. So we want to invite you here at 6 p.m. Uh, tonight at the church for our Karen Peck and New River concert, especially if you love Southern Gospel. But we are uh, ending, uh, getting ready to end a series. We'll end it next week probably, but uh, we're getting towards the end of this series called Ask Anything. We're, we simply took your questions from this summer and uh, we kind of walked through all those questions and said, okay, you know, what, what do you really want to hear about? And out of the many, many responses that we got, we took the most popular ones. So we talked about things like heaven. We talked about things like why do good things happen to bad people. We talked about things like racism. That was a very, very big topic. Topic. Uh, I want to encourage you to go back online. All these are cataloged, myjeffersonchurch.org. You can listen to all these sermons and all these services. But today uh, is a very, very um, simple topic, or at least it should be simple. Uh, today we are talking about uh, forgiveness. Uh, how many of you in this room, you have a hard time forgiving somebody, you have a hard time with somebody right now, um, or you have had a hard time in the past? And I will say this before, before I ask you to raise your hands. How many of you say uh, you have a hard time because everybody has somebody? Okay, everybody has somebody that they have a hard time with. It doesn't matter who you are. We all have somebody that we have a difficult time with uh, forgiving. So who, who is it? Who is somebody that you say, I have a hard time forgiving? Come on, raise your hand. Anybody? 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 That's good. That's good. Okay, let me just tell you, if your hand is down, you may be the person causing the forgiveness that is needed. <laughs> okay, so you might be that individual. You might want to think about that. If that kind of went over your head, I just pray the Holy Spirit drops that in on you. Um, second question I want to ask, how many of you have siblings? We're going to talk about forgiveness, and siblings is one of the first things I talk about. How many of you have siblings? Yeah. Uh, okay, how many of you were firstborn? Raise your hand, firstborn. Yeah, you know what that means? That means your parents more than likely wanted you. Like they actually said, hey, let's try and have a child. We want to have a kid. There was love uh, in, in the equation, and you were, you were wanted. So you were the firstborn. That's great. That's fine. Uh, I was not firstborn, so therefore I'm not a big fan of you. How many of you were secondborn? Any secondborns in the house? Okay, do you want to know why you were second born? You were the born second to keep number one happy. That's basically what you were here for. You were, uh, number one needed a friend. They needed a play toy. They needed something to dress up. And uh, that's why you came along. That's at least what I feel like. I'm second born. Third borns, anybody? Third borns, third or fourth, you know, kind of go down the line. There are no pictures of you anywhere, are there? And if they are, they're like Polaroids or they're something you post on Instagram, Facebook. But like my sister, she had this amazing Olin Mills, like handcrafted, painted picture of her in a white baby little house on the prairie bonnet with her white Bible. And like I never got any of that stuff. So, you know, it's just kind of funny. The further on down the list you go, the fewer pictures there are of you. But my sister was older and uh, she used to beat me up all the time. I mean, she was somebody who literally told me what to do. And then when I stopped listening to what she told me to do, uh, she started beating me up for it. And so she would hit me. She would sit on me. Uh, she would uh, uh, make me do things that I did not want to do. She, she beat me up. She was a vile, vile person. I'm telling you, she, she um, actually uh, I walked in from a hot summer day, and she said, here, Nick, I poured you some Mountain Dew. Oh, that's so nice. I put it to my lips. I began to drink it. It was actually pickle juice. I mean, just a vile person, just a vile woman uh, back in her day. But here's what happened. Uh, as things do, I got bigger. I grew. And as I got bigger and I grew, the fights began to be more evenly matched. And then as time progressed, I began to win some of the fights. And let me tell you, I had some fun, okay? I really did. Uh, I, I was that uh, brother who I was younger but bigger than her. And so we get on the trampoline and I would give her a dead leg. How many of y'all know what a dead leg is? Like it's when they hit that sweet spot around the side of, of your mid-thigh and, and all of a sudden like you just can't walk and you're laughing because it hurts. Like isn't that just weird? It's kind of like witchcraft. <laughs> like you're, you're laughing because it hurts. 
Um, but I can remember uh, holding her down, and as I'm holding her down the trampoline, I would allow spit to come out of my mouth. I know this is gross, but I would allow spit to come out of my mouth and like drip down like it was going to touch her face, and then right before I got to her face, I like bring it back up. You know, like that, that's the kind of brother I was because I wanted to get back at her for all the things she did for me when I was little. Uh, um, can, can I, she would get up from those moments and uh, off the trampoline crying, mad, upset, going to tell mom. And she would say things like, I'm never going to forgive you. You know, like, like that's, that's the type of forgiveness that she, unforgiveness that she had. That's not the unforgiveness I'm talking about today. All right, I'm not talking about sibling rivalry. I'm not talking about, you know, little petty things here and there. I'm talking about deep-rooted, deep-seated unforgiveness in our lives. I'm talking about things that I've struggled with. And, and let me just tell you, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, um, your wife's pregnant, and new life is coming into the world, and new life is always a great thing, never a bad thing. Let me just tell you, new life is always a good thing, no matter when it comes, where it comes, the circumstances may be different, but new life is always a blessing from God. Can I get amen? But we had this new life coming into our world. It was going to complete our family. We were ready to go, and then someone does some crazy things. They start threatening us. Someone decides to um, begin to uh, really uh, uh, say some nasty things about us. Uh, They begin to make death threats about us. They begin to accuse us of things that we had never done. They begin to really try to ruin who we are as as a reputation, ruin who we were as, as a married couple. I mean, really, really tried to go after us. And in this season... We did a lot of things that most people don't, don't do. We, we had to leave town for a few days because we were worried about what was going to happen. We had to check out our outside windows when, dar, when doors closed, uh, car doors closed, because we didn't know who it might be. And, and it may be our neighbor, but it may be that person trying to come and, and hurt us. And, and I, I can remember the season of life that we were in when we were going through all that. And, 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 and I felt like this, this person that was doing it to us, we had tried to help them. We had spent years of our lives, of our family. Our family had spent years. that We invited them to Christmas and Thanksgiving, and, and like they were a part of who we were, and we tried to help them. And for some reason, it just completely flipped and completely went the opposite direction. And we tried our best to help that person, but it just didn't work out that way. And, and then all of a sudden, um, we, we tried everything we could, but because of the stress and the strain of that season, Because of the mental things, the physical things, the fear that we were living in during that time, we lost our baby. And Nellie's never, ever gone through anything like that, before or since. We know, doctors have told us that because of the strain and because of the stress, that's why this happened. So in essence, this individual that did this to us in our life helped kill our child. That's the kind of unforgiveness I'm talking about. That's the kind of thing that, that really, really hits us today. Because I was mad. I was not going to forgive this person. I remember uh, walking outside and just shaking my fists to the heavens and just, just saying some really, really awful things about the situation, about this person, and about God sometimes. But I was really, really upset. And then one day I was reading the Lord's Prayer, I was, I was listening to a sermon on the Lord's Prayer, and I began to read it myself, and it's found in Matthew chapter 6, but all through the Lord's Prayer it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, kingdom come, will be done. Uh, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And you know, it kind of comes with the cadence of things, and you kind of lose track of what it's really trying to say. But then Jesus backtracks, and as soon as he gets through with the Lord's Prayer, he, backs, he backtracks, and, and he reminds us of one thing. He doesn't go back and talk about daily bread. He doesn't go back and talk about our Father who art in heaven. He goes back and talks about forgiveness. Why? Because he knew Nick Dalton was going to have a hard problem, a hard time with this. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, it says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, when they sin against you, when they do bad things on purpose, we're not talking about, oops, I didn't mean to, or car accident, maybe a person wasn't looking and it was, just, it was just an accident. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, I did this to you on purpose. If you don't forgive others of their sins, your father, the Bible says, I'm not saying it, I'm not announcing it to you, I'm, I'm letting you know what God's word says, that your father will not forgive you of your sins. I've struggled with this passage. 
I've struggled with this so much during this episode of our life because it's one thing if you want to hurt me. It's one thing if you want to attack me, and that's exactly what was happening. But because they were attacking me and because they were attacking my wife, it hurt our child. It hurt our unborn baby. And it's one thing to hurt me, but don't you hurt my kids. And that was the essence of what I was going through. How do you forgive something that seems so unforgivable? How do you forgive someone that seems so unforgivable? And I, I just I need to stop right there and, and let you hear the end of the story before we get there. That God is bigger than anything you face. God's greater than anything you face. God is bigger than any circumstance that can come against you. No matter what happens, God is bigger and God is greater. And I'm believing that you are here today. I'm believing you're watching online today for a reason. And what I'm hoping is that the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit completely transforms your life completely transforms this unforgiveness. And I'm praying that you have a face-to-face encounter with your issues, a face-to-face encounter with a God who's bigger than what you're facing, and that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will change and transform your life today. You see, Jesus experienced moments where he could have had unforgiveness. Jesus experienced moments where he felt that kind of pain. Luke chapter 23 and verse 32, he's hanging on the cross between two thieves. And the Bible says two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. You see, this was a brutal persecution this was, this was the most brutal, the most elaborate execution that the Romans could come up with. It was also the most expensive ex- execution, which means they really hated you if they were going to spend money to make sure you died the right way. This was for the worst of the worst, the terrible, the murderers, the ones who had no remorse for what they were doing. And the Bible says that on the way to the cross, they beat him so bad, some translations say you could not interpret him or you could not see him. He was not recognizable as a human being. But some translations even say you could not recognize him as a man. I'll let you think about what that means. They could not even recognize him as a man. He was brutally beaten. He was mutilated. He was naked and hung up on a cross, not loincloth, not, it was completely disrespectful, completely dishonoring, hanging him naked on a cross. Nails went through his wrists, and more than likely, they didn't put his feet on top of each other and nail it to it. More than likely, they put his feet on either side of the cross beam and nailed both sides of his feet. It was terrible. It was torture. The, um, you know, most, most depictions say that he was three, four, five, six feet off the ground. His feet were that high off the ground. More than likely, his feet were only a foot off the ground so that people could walk up to him and look at him in the eye and ridicule him, curse at him, slap him, spit upon him. Complete public disgrace. But crucifixion was not death by bleeding. It was death by suffocation. And, and actually what happened in these, stuff, in, in these crucifixions is that the individual could last for days. They hung there for sometimes days. And on most accounts, as we have seen, on most accounts in that time, people went crazy before they actually died from such dehydration and such a strain on their mental and physical capabilities. The only reason they died in a hurry was because Passover was the next day and you couldn't have crucifixions on the Passover. But I'm telling you, this was a brutal, brutal place. Brutal, brutal time in Jesus' life. He experienced all of this. Jesus experienced it all. And then he prayed. Luke 23, 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Everyone that passed by me and spat in my face. Forgive the soldier that put the nails in my feet, this excruciating pain. Forgive the, 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 the soldiers that, that whipped me and tore flesh from my back. Forgive the soldiers that mutilated me and punched me. And when I was blindfolded, they would punch me and say, who, who hit you then? And they would spit on me and ridicule me and put a crown of thorns. Forgive them. Forgive the ones that caused this. Forgive the religious leaders that, that brought all this stuff up and gave false accusation against me. Forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. How could he pray something in a situation 
that was completely unforgivable. He did nothing wrong. I'm, I may be here today and you may be saying, I, I've done nothing wrong. This is just something that's happened, and, and maybe that's the case. Maybe there's some wrong on your side, and we all need to be able to look at both sides of a coin. But in Jesus' case, he did absolutely nothing wrong. How could he pray a prayer like this? And here's the thing. I know that you're in this room, and I know what's going through your mind right now. You're thinking, yeah, but. Yeah, you don't know what I've been through. Yeah, you don't know the things, that I, and, and you don't know what, what I've been having to deal with in my life. You don't know what my childhood was like. And listen, I'm aware that you're here. I'm aware that you've been abused as a child. It's crazy what's happening in our nation today trying to, trying to legalize or make it right, the, the topic of pedophilia. It's absolutely amazing to me, but I realize that you may have been abused as a child. As a matter of fact, statistics say that after childhood, meaning between the ages of, 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 during adulthood, that one in three women will be abused sexually. That means, that means I line you up on a pew, I line you up on a row, ten of you, and I go, one, two, you. One, two, you. One, two, you. One out of three will be sexually abused. And in men, it's one out of five will be sexually abused at some point in their lifetime. I'm talking about that kind of hurt, that kind of unforgiveness. I, I'm talking about somebody who cheated you at your business and stole a lot of money from you, possibly putting you in a hole for a long time, possibly putting you in a place where you couldn't get out and you had to declare bankruptcy. I'm talking about that kind of unforgiveness. I'm talking about that parent that hurts you, that, that maybe that sibling, maybe that grandparent that hurt you, molested you, and they died and you didn't make it right, and you're still there sitting in bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness. I'm talking about that kind of situation. I'm talking about the person you can't even forgive God because you feel like that he should have stepped in. You feel like he could have healed. He could have done something different. He could have made the test come back different. He could have made the surgery work. He could have made this person live. He could have done everything, and you can't even forgive God because of what you felt like he didn't do in your life. But I'm also talking to the person you can't forgive you. Like you're the reason you're messed up. And you know it. You're the reason your situation is where it is, and you know it. I'm talking about that type of unforgiveness. I'm talking about the unforgiveness that just doesn't go away. You know, it's kind of like vacuuming. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but uh, m- maybe you like having lines in your carpet for when you vacuum. I think that's of the devil. I don't think that's right. Now, when you're cutting grass, it's completely different. You need lines when you cut grass. That's part of it. But when you're vacuuming, it doesn't matter. Just make sure the floor is clean. Chanel, on the other hand, she loves her lines. We, uh, we moved into a house that had all hardwood floors, thank God. But like when, when we had homes that, that had carpet in them, they were all lined up and they had to be perfectly lined up. And if company was coming, you couldn't walk in those lined areas or else she'd have to redo it. But uh, there'd be times I'd be vacuuming and sometimes there's just that spot that thing that's so attached to the carpet and you vacuum and vacuum and it doesn't come up and you get on this angle and you vacuum, vacuum, and you vacuum, vacuum, and you keep trying and you keep trying. And finally, what do you do? You, you turn the vacuum off or you lean over, you pick it up and you look at it. But what do you do from there? Do you go to the trash can and put it in the trash can? No, you put it back on the carpet and you try to get it thing up with the vacuum cleaner. I'm talking about that in your life, that kind of pain, that kind of unforgiveness. It just will not go Away. I mean, you've been to counseling. You've tried. You've tried uh, um, um, self motivation. You tried exercising. I mean, you tried to get your 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 problems, your anger out in a different way. You've tried books. You've tried church. You've tried everything that there is, and it just isn't going away. But in the awful pain of the moment, in the awful pain of what Jesus was experiencing, Jesus said. And prayed, Father, forgive them. So I want to ask you this question. How do you forgive people that do not deserve forgiveness? How do you forgive people that purposefully, intentionally, and with complete hatred and complete and and all the energy they had, they focused on hurting you? How do you forgive people like that? So this morning is very simple. Because I don't feel like I have to elaborate very much because I feel like we all have dealt with unforgiveness in one way or another. And we are probably all still dealing with it in some form or fashion. So how do we do that? How do we pray like Jesus? God, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. How do we forgive like him? Two very, very simple thoughts. And let me just go ahead and tell you, it's not from me. This isn't a self-motivation. 
This isn't self-help today coming from a pastor who has all this knowledge and all this experience because I don't. But I lean on God's word. I lean on what he's spoken and what he's taught. And there's two simple truths, just two, that's it. Just two simple things that we can learn from God's word about forgiveness. Number one, pray for those who hurt you. Right there, you checked out, didn't you? (laughs) Right there, I could see it in your eyes. Right there, you checked out. Pray for those who hurt you. The Bible says, Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. You say, Pastor Nick, I do pray. I pray, God, give them hemorrhoids in Jesus' name. You know, like like put hemorrhoids in their ear. Is that possible? Like, can you do that? I pray the flies of a thousand camels finds their face at some point when it's 95 degrees outside and they don't have anywhere to go. Just let it just, woo, just come straight in on them. That's the prayer I pray. But then Jesus says something so shocking to his audience that he's speaking to in Matthew chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 6. He he speaks this to to an audience that completely it took them back. And this is what he says. He says, you've heard it said that love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That culture was ingrained. That culture had been there for a long time. That culture was something you taught your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. And all these ethnicities and all these empires, they all believed this. You hated your enemy and you loved your neighbor. You hated your enemy and you loved your friend. You hated the one that tried to do wrong to you and you tried to put it back on them. But you love your neighbor. But Jesus says, love your enemy. Love your enemy. And pray for those who persecute you. Notice in this passage, he doesn't even mention neighbor anymore. He's like, you've got such a problem with people that you don't like. Have you ever noticed it's not hard loving people you like? It's not hard getting along with people that you are okay with, but the ones that you're not okay with, it's constantly up here. It's always in the back of your mind. You're thinking about it going to sleep. You're thinking about it when you're driving to work. You're thinking about it when you're cooking your food. Like you're always thinking about it. That's why Jesus goes, hey, let's forget about the neighbor for a second. They're important, but let's forget about them and let's focus on who you really are concerned about. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. What? Are you serious? Like the Romans worshiped the God of revenge. This is the crowd Jesus is speaking to. The Jewish people believed an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, blood for blood. You hit me, I'm going to hit you. You say some words to me, I'm going to fire right back at you. You get on traffic with me and you shoot me a bird, I'll give you a whole flock, buddy, you know? <laughs> like, I'll just give it right back to you, both hands. And maybe that's why some of you don't have Jefferson Church window stickers, and I'm very thankful for that. Maybe that's the very reason why you won't go get some. They're free, you can go have them, but you don't, you don't want them on your window because you know how you act when you drive. I, I, I completely understand but you pray for the people that hurt you intentionally. They intentionally hurt you and you intentionally pray for them. Let me put it to you this way. Pray for the person that through their influence killed your unborn baby. Pray pray for the person who robbed your family's life. Pray for the person who abused you. Pray for the person who molested you. Pray pray for the one who molested or abused a loved one. Pray for them, Jesus says. Someone who robbed you, pray for them. Why did Jesus teach this? Why is this simple truth so hard to understand? I could give you six points of how to forgive people, but quite honestly, it really boils down to two things. That Jesus taught for us to pray for the people who hurt us. Why? Why? Why, why, why? God, why would you ask me to pray for somebody? Because I believe external things happen internally first. Things that people do on the outside never start from the outside. They start from the inside. In other words, a cuss word comes out. It's not because just you've been. It's not because you've been around cuss words your whole life. There's something internally that's coming out of it. The Bible says, "Out of the heart, the mouth speaks." Out of the heart, the body breathes. Out of the heart, these things happen in our life. There's something internally that happens, and I believe just as that can happen in a negative connotation, it can also happen in a positive way. For the Bible says, if the heart is light, everything is light. But if the heart is dark, everything is dark. So why would Jesus teach this? I think it's something about having a right attitude leads to a right action. 
the right way of thinking, the right way of, of when you're by yourself, the right way of when you're really internal and, and really having a hard time, the right attitude will lead to the right action in some sense of the phrase, meaning it's got to start in the heart. Listen to me, it's not a feeling. You may never and probably will never feel like forgiving this person, and if you're waiting on that, you're going to be waiting a very, very long time. Like, like I will forgive them when I'm over it. Guess what? You will probably never fully get over it. Therefore, you will probably never fully forgive that person. And that's something that just cannot happen in a believer's life. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you this. Your prayers that you pray, I am not guaranteeing you it's going to change them. I'm not guaranteeing you that your prayers are going to change your situation. But here's what I am promising you. Your prayers will absolutely change you. They will absolutely change who God's trying to make different. They will absolutely change the prayers that we point at so many other people. Sometimes those prayers will see to come right back at us. Because prayers may not change the situation, but it will always change you. Now listen, I don't pretend to know what you've been through. I don't pretend to know what you've had going on in your life. But Jesus knows. God's bigger than anything you face. Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. And Jesus said, knowing what you're having going on in your life right now, knowing what's happening, knowing the ridicule, knowing the problems, knowing the unforgiveness, knowing the pain and the hurt, knowing all those things, Jesus said, pray for them. I don't pretend to say this is easy, but it's what the Bible says. Pray for them. The second thing and final thing is forgive as you have been forgiven. Forgive people as you have been forgiven. You see, up until now, the, the, the arrow is pointed at the other person. Up until now, Jesus says, hey, pray for them. Pray for them. Do, do them. Do, do good to them. Bless them. And, and, and in some connotations, we, we want to bless them. We want to do good things to them. We're not, you know, vile. But, but I'm just saying there are times where unforgiveness is so deeply rooted in our lives that everything's pointing at them. Everything's about them. And you are giving all the power of your life to that person simply because you will not forgive them. But at this point, the Bible says, the Bible gives us an example of forgiving as you have been forgiven. The arrow is no longer pointing at the person. The arrow is pointing right back at you. Meaning, you have done things that you need forgiveness from. You have needed forgiveness of this. And because you've needed forgiveness, you need to give that forgiveness to others. Colossians 3.13 says this, Forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive. Say this with me, as the Lord forgave you. Come on, say it. As the Lord forgave you. One more time. As the Lord forgave you. You, you need to forgive. Now, once again, there will be nothing on the inside of you that feels like forgiving anybody. There will be nothing that makes you want to feel forgiveness. And it's going to be counterintuitive for you to forgive this person. And I'm telling you, it will take an act of your spirit before your actions. It'll take an act. You have to lead by your choices and not lead by your feelings. Feelings will, will hurt you every single time. Feelings will lead you astray every single time. But if you are led by the choices of your life, I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing forgiveness. I'm choosing to get over this. It might be hard. It may be a process. It might not be a one and done, a black and white the next day. It might not be a, a sudden change, but I am choosing every single day to get over this. You have to choose those things because if you are led by your feelings, your life will be a complete disaster. You have to be led by your choices. And you say, well, <laughs> some of you are like, well, I'll just go on with my life. You know, like God knows how I feel. They know what they've done to me. I don't need anything I don't need anything different. I'm saved. I've got my ticket to heaven. I'll just leave things in the past and I'll just leave it alone. That's what some of you in this room are thinking right now. I don't need to listen to Pastor Nick. I don't need to hear what he's saying. It's too deep. It's too hard. It was molesting. It was abusing. It was cheating me out of a job, cheating me out of money. My, my family would be set right now if it weren't for that person. I don't need to listen to this. And you say, I'm saved, I'm good, me and God are great, I don't need to listen to this right now. Do you know that there are certain things in your walk, in your daily walk, that will keep God from hearing your prayers? It'll keep your prayers from reaching God. The Bible says, hindering your prayers to get to God. Let me just list some things for you. No, number one, if you don't have a relationship with him, God only hears the prayers of his children. 
God only hears the cries of his children, of his ones that he has called to be the elect. And unless the Holy Spirit is involved in the process, he doesn't hear your prayers if you're not a believer. The second thing is unconfessed sin in your life. Maybe you've got something that you've done that you have not uh, purely and surely uh, repented of. You've got unconfessed sins. The Bible says unconfessed sin will hinder your prayers from getting to God. It also says selfishness. In other words, praying with the wrong motive. Your prayers won't get answered that way, the Bible says. In other words, your prayers will be hindered from getting to God because you're selfish. But you want to know the fourth thing? There may be some other things, but these are the four that I've found. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will keep your prayers from reaching God. Now notice you say, well, that's not a big deal. How is that not a big deal? Your communication line, the pipeline that you have with God is disrupted. Do you know how battles are lost and wars are lost? Because the enemy can get to the lines of communication of the adversary. Because one side can cut the lines of communication, and if they've done that, they're completely discombobulated, and they can then, from that point forward, dismember them at their disposal because they don't have communication. When you can't pray and God doesn't hear you, imagine what can happen to your life, all because you can't let it go. Unforgiveness hinders your prayers from reaching God. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, Forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Matter of fact, it, it says, you know what, if, if you've got unconfessed sin, if you've got a problem with your brother, instead of bringing your offering to the church, leave the offering at the altar, leave the offering wherever it is, go get it right and then come back and give the offering. Come back and worship. Come back and do what you're supposed to do. It's that important. I'm telling you right now that this is the kind of the last thing to say for today. That forgiving someone, it's not for their sake. Forgiving someone is for your sake. It's for yours. I'm telling you, I've, I've gone through situations and circumstances in my life that forgiveness has been a really hard thing. Now, I would say overall, I'm, I'm pretty okay with forgiving people. I can let stuff slide. I really can, especially if it's towards me. If it's towards me, I can, I can reason away, oh, they're having a bad day, oh, it's no big deal, hey, it's fine, you know, maybe just, and I t- tend to give people the, the reasonable doubt, you know, like, like the, just, just, hey, look, it's okay, you just had a bad day, you're fine. When you hurt my kids, hurt my wife, it turns for me, and I can't help it. That's why I know everybody in this room deals with unforgiveness in one form or fashion. But let me just tell you this. Everybody listening, watching online, let me tell you something. Unforgiveness will destroy your life. Why? Because sin will destroy your life. Sin leads to death, everybody. Unforgiveness is not you hurting the person. Unforgiveness is you hurting you. Unforgiveness is like (laughs) you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It's like you setting something on fire It's like you setting yourself on fire and expecting the other person to to die of smoke inhalation. It doesn't work that way. You've got to see that forgiveness is not for their sake necessarily, but forgiveness is for your sake. I'm telling you, the Bible is very clear about this. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know, I I feel impressed to say this. Maybe, just maybe, some things are happening in your life right now simply because you have not forgiven the person you need. Don't let it be a tomorrow thing. Don't let it be a later on thing. Let it be a today thing. There are some text messages that need to be sent as you leave these doors today. There are some phone calls that need to be made the moment you leave these doors today. There are some issues that need to be worked out between spouses, between brothers, between between siblings, parents, mom and dad. There are some issues that need to be worked out because if you don't, you're in trouble. If you don't, There's not a lot of hope available for you today. So I just want to ask you, how does this message hit you? Can I tell you that that this message today doesn't end with an uptick? It ends with a warning. And I meant it to be that way. I try to be as positive as possible. You know, I'm not saying I'm Joel Osteen and just everybody's going to have a great day. You know, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying you need to get it right. 
you need to get this right. Unforgiveness cannot go unchecked in your life, and if it does, it will hinder God from hearing your prayers, and it could hinder you from getting to heaven. It's that serious. So with our heads bowed and eyes closed, just for a moment. Who am I talking to? Online today, in your living room, wherever you're watching this, who, who am I talking to? Who's the person that God is bringing to your mind? The Holy Spirit is bringing this individual to you right now. This is who you need to make this right with. You say, well, I'm in the process. Try harder. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the thing. It's, I've, I've done my thing. Ball's in their court. Look, keep the ball in your court 24-7 and just get it right. Get it done. Get it out. Get it over with. And just forgive. Because forgiveness is more for you than it is for anybody else. So if you're here today and you say, you know, Pastor Nick, I, I just need to forgive somebody. I just, I've got some really, really hard issues, really hard problems in my life. Some things have gone on that, that I couldn't help, and it was just, it was difficult. I want to pray for you today. But maybe you're here and you say, you know, I've, I've never even given my life to Jesus. God doesn't hear my prayers because I'm not a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is pulling you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit draws us to salvation, draws us to repentance. And that's where we find Jesus. This is where God hears you. Where you say, God, I need you more than anything else. I surrender my life to you right now. That's what you need to say. So if you want to give your life to Jesus today, I want to encourage you. Just say this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins, for my mistakes. God, I give you everything. All of my pain, all of my past, all of my cares, and all of my worries. All of my issues and my sins, I repent of all of them. I give them to you right now. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me new. Thank you, God, that you have made me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for everybody in this room that they're dealing with unforgiveness. I pray that, God, they would see they're not hurting them, they're hurting themselves. They're not hurting the person they're trying to hurt. It's hurting themselves. To help us to be like water off a duck's back, just let it roll down. But the, the times that it does sting, the times that it's personal, the times that, it, that it's intentional, I'm praying in Jesus' name you would give us the spirit of Christ to help us see through anything we can forgive. Why? Because God's bigger than anything we face. And that's what you've asked us to do. So Father, help us to pray for them, but also to forgive them as we've been forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today here at the Jefferson Church. We pray that you are blessed and encouraged. If you gave your life to the Lord for the very first time today or rededicated it, we would love to know. If you would write us at office at myjeffersonchurch.org, it would be an honor for us to be able to walk you through your next steps as a believer. Have a great day, and we are so blessed to call you our online family. See you soon.